Good morning to all of you. We are discussing about the properties of matter and the phase diagrams during the change of state. Almost we are, the, we are at the end of this uh, discussion. So, today we will continue again the same thing. So, just in continuation, we like to have a look on this uh, figure that these are the typical PV, TS, PT, HS diagram to show the uh, states in different thermodynamic plane during change of phase liquid and liquid vapor and vapor, only liquid vapor two phases. So, these things have already been discussed. Now, before <coughs> closing this discussion on this phase diagram, I like to emphasize one point uh, at the end of uh, last class, the time was not there which I forgot to emphatically mention that you see that these are the saturation states for liquid and vapor. Similarly, the states are available for solid liquid transitions also. So, now you see <coughs> these states are being specified by either pressure or temperature. When pressure is fixed, the corresponding isotherm temperature is fixed, which are known as saturation properties. That means, the temperature corresponding to the pressure is known as saturation temperature for that pressure. Similarly, here when the temperature is fixed, the pressure is fixed, same way the pressure is known as the saturation pressure corresponding to the temperature. Another thing which we notice that <coughs> these points in this diagram, these are the points which represent the different mixtures of different com mixtures of different compositions of liquid and vapor. Now, one thing is true that though the pressure and temperature are fixed for these two states, saturated state, that means the liquid, saturated liquid state, saturated vapor state saturated liquid state and dry saturated vapor state. Similar is the here dry saturated liquid state, dry saturated vapor state. But one thing is that all the points here, they are varying with specific volume, they are varying with specific entropy and the enthalpy also, specific enthalpy. That means, these state points represent a mixture of liquid and vapor, liquid and dry vapor. And you see that to fix a particular state that means, to fix a particular point, we require an additional information which is the dryness fraction x or the quality, which is defined as the fraction of the total mixture as the mass of the total fraction of the mass of the total mixture as the dry vapor. That means, x is the ratio of the mass of the dry vapor to the mass of the total mixture. That means, x is equal to 1 is this line, x is equal to 0 is this line. That means, these points are specified by x. So, therefore, one thing has to be understood that the saturation states can be specified by pressure and temperature, but this weight condition that these are the points known as weight vapor. Weight vapor means these are the saturated states, but with a different composition of mixtures of liquid, dry saturated liquid and dry saturated vapor. That means, to know the specific volume, specific entropy, specific enthalpy specific volume, specific entropy, specific enthalpy, we require the dryness fraction x. Otherwise, during these saturated states, this will vary from a value of value, from a value corresponding to the saturated liquid to a value corresponding to the dry saturated vapor. So, this is very important thing. Similar is the case for triple point. You see, tri but here you have Pt, again these two points along with all these points they coincide to a single point because the saturated entire saturated states considering all the weight vapors within the vapor dome they, they are quizzed to single point because they refer to a single pressure and temperature. Solid liquid this is also liquid vapor. So, in this case these two are these points. Similarly is the case for triple point. Triple point is the point where solid liquid and vapor can coexist into equilibrium and they refer to a single pressure and temperature which are unique for a given substance, but at the same time the composition may change. That means, solid, liquid and vapor, the mixture composition can change. Composition means what will be the fraction of solid mass, what will be the fraction of liquid mass, what will be the fraction of vapor mass. So, therefore, even if there is an unique pressure and unique temperature, for example, in case of water, what is this? P T T T is 0 0.00611 bar. Similarly, for this is 0 0.01 degree Celsius. Even if this is unique, but the specific volume, specific entropy, similar is this case, specific enthalpy, they are varying depending upon the composition. See in the PV diagram, this is the line. That is why in the PV diagram, a triple point, a triple point appears as a line. The way 
the saturation states appear as a line. Similarly, in TH diagram, this is known as sometimes triple point line. So, point means straight, point means straight, so triple point straight line. Whereas, this is indicated by a point in PT diagram. Similar is the case in H S diagram, triple point line, triple point line. Usually, this is written in the, that means this represents a line. Why? Because these three intensive properties, which are the specific values of the extensive properties like volume, enthalpy, total enthalpy, sorry, entropy and enthalpy. These typical intensive properties depend upon the fraction. In case of two phase saturation states, this is defined as a dryness fraction or quality. Here, no such parameter is defined, but one has to remember that there may be various com combinations of this or there may be various compositions of a solid, liquid and vapor depending upon which the three properties will vary. So, that the triple point state is represented by a line in the PV diagram. It can have infinite number of specific volumes, it can have any specific entropy. So, this point represents states of three phases coexisting in equilibrium, but with different values of specific volume, specific entropy, but the temperature is fixed, similarly the enthalpy. So, below this point, if you heat at constant pressure, solid is converted to vapor. So, these are the points where solid vapor are in equilibrium. So, it is either saturated solid or saturated vapor line corresponding to sublimation in forward or backward direction. These are the saturated sublimation state. So, this is also at constant temperature. So, this is sublimation. Well, similarly, this point represents that. So, at here, if we transfer, it will be solid to vapor. That means, this is the point saturated states for sublimation. That means, saturated solid for sublimation, saturated vapor for sublimation. Okay? All right. Now, after that, the, we will discuss one important thing, practically important thing that when we take steam, sometimes it is very important, I just explain this thing to you. Uh, the how to measure the dryness fraction of steam. That means, if we have a wet steam having certain dryness fraction, how to measure the dryness fraction? Because we know if you have an wet steam, let us see this way, that if you have an wet steam, we know that if we have an wet steam, we know that its property like specific volume is find out as 1 minus x v f plus x v g where V f is the specific volume of the saturated liquid and that is dry saturated gas. Similar is the case for enthalpy 1 minus x h f plus x a g. So, h f is the enthalpy at the saturated liquid, this a g is the enthalpy at the saturated vapor. Similar is the case of s 1 minus s plus x s g s f. S f is the entropy of the saturated liquid and S g is the entropy of the disaturated gas. So, therefore, to specify these properties of a wet steam, we have to know the x, the dryness fraction or the quality, dryness fraction or the quality, dryness fraction or quality. Now, if we have a wet steam of some dryness fraction or quality to determine these values, which are very important at this moment, you know probably at this stage how important are those values in calculating heat and work transfer in a system that change these properties play what important role to determine what is the reversibility of the system. So, these three properties have to be found out very important properties we have to know the x. So, therefore, x has to be specified. So, this value this dryness fraction or quality this parameter is determined experimentally and how do you measure the dryness fraction or quality of steam. But before that, I like to tell you one very important thing, which you will not find in any book. I can tell you any book of thermodynamics. Sometimes this question I ask in the laboratory classes this is a very interesting question. Try to understand. When you will read heat transfer, these things will be made a uh, little more clear that as you have heard uh, since your school days, there is a difference between boiling and evaporation. There are so many points, probably a little understanding you have marked up all the points. There are six, seven points difference between evaporation and boiling. But the major point is like that evaporation occurs at any temperature. That means, if you have a liquid, just I like to mention this thing in this context of thermodynamics, so that some concept is clear at this level. That if you have a liquid at any temperature, 
For example, today the room temperature, for example, is 20 degrees Celsius. If you take water at one atmospheric pressure and 20 degrees Celsius, you know that it will not boil. Because you know saturation temperature corresponding to one atmospheric pressure is 100 degrees Celsius. So until and unless there is an 100 degrees Celsius temperature of the water, it will not boil. So the phase change because of the boiling will not take place. But what will happen? Water will continuously be converted into its vapor stage. For an example, a simple example, if you keep the water in the room and if you come after five days or six days, you will see all the water has been converted into vapor. This is an evaporation process which is spontaneous. That means whenever there is a liquid open into a surrounding at ambient of uh, gaseous ambient, for example, air in this case, then water part molecules from the surface will always be converted into vapor. What is the physical process? This is known as evaporation. That evaporation, continuously water is being evaporated. And this evaporation process will be enhanced if the water temperature is being raised. If water is at 20 degrees Celsius, there will be some rate of evaporation. If water is at 40 degrees Celsius, the rate of evaporation will be increased. Now, what is this physical process? What for the evaporation takes place? Let, let me explain. Whenever there is an water you keep in a container with a free surface, always there will be an adhering vapor. There will be an adhering water vapor with the free surface. Now, this vapor is always that dry saturated state. Now, what happens if the concentration of the vapor in the atmosphere, free stream, that means at a far distance from this free surface in the undisturbed atmosphere is less than this concentration, then the vapor will flow. This is known as molecular diffusion. That means the vapor pressure is less. Try to understand. Vapor pressure is less. Concentration less means vapor pressure. Just again, I am giving an example. There is a pot. Let me see. Let me explain this. Way. There is a pot. There is a water. This may take some time, but this concept should be water at 20 degrees Celsius. So, here just on the free surface, there is a layer of both vapor and air. Understand? Vapor and air. There is a layer of vapor, water vapor, water vapor and air mixture, water vapor and air. So, it is a mixture of water vapor, water vapor plus air. There is a mixture of water vapor and air. What is the pressure of the water vapor PV? That pressure will be the saturation pressure corresponding to 20 degrees Celsius. That means this water vapor will be at the saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius. Otherwise, this water vapor will not be in equilibrium with this water. That means this water vapor is at the saturation pressure corresponding to the existing temperature. And since the total pressure is one atmospheric pressure, total pressure is one atmospheric pressure. So, the partial pressure of the air which is mixed with the vapor and adhering to the free surface that will be the one atmospheric pressure minus P s at 20 degrees Celsius. So, that the total pressure become equals to the atmospheric pressure. So, the partial pressure of the water vapor equals to the <coughs> saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius known as vapor pressure. Now, if the vapor present in the atmosphere is such depends upon its amount, total amount such that its saturation pressure that is P v is less than the saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius, then the water vapor here will diffuse because it is the vapor pressure gradient which allows the diffusion of water vapor from the surface to the atmosphere. If the at vapor pressure present in the atmosphere is less than the saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius. For an example, saturation pressure at 20 degrees Celsius, let uh, oh, sorry, 20 degrees Celsius, let a 0.5 atmospheric pressure. So, if the vapor pressure or the partial pressure of the vapor in the undisturbed atmosphere is less than 0.5 atmosphere, then what will happen? There will be a vapor pressure potential which will drive this liquid vapor to flow to the atmosphere. This is known as diffusion, diffusion, diffusion of gas, diffusion of vapor. And the rate of diffusion is given by fixed law and these things. These are molecular diffusion. When the diffusion will take place, automatically to make the equilibrium, the molecules of water in the liquid state will be detached from the surface and will be generated here to maintain the equilibrium that this pressure, because some mass is going from here. So, this has to be balanced by further mass to retain this vapor pressure at the surface, so that continuous the evaporation will take place. Now, you see one thing. So, the conversion of water into vapor 
from the free surface is guided by the diffusion. So, if diffusion is somehow choked or closed, for example, I make the atmosphere in such a way that P B equal to P S, that means 0 0.5 atmospheric pressure. In that case, no vapor will flow and therefore, no water molecule will be converted into vapor, no evaporation will take place. What is the situation when P B is equal to P S? 20 degree Celsius is the room temperature. So, corresponding saturation pressure is 0 0.5 atmospheric pressure. So, vapor in the atmosphere is such of such quantity that the partial pressure equals to 0 0.5 atmospheric pressure. That means, the saturation pressure corresponding to the room temperature that pertains to the condition of relative humidity of 100 percent. That means, 100 percent relative humidity. So, in 100 percent relative humidity, there will be no diffusion of vapor from a water surface to the ambient. So, that water will not be evaporated, Evap evaporation will be stopped. Now, if we heat the water, this temperature will increase. So, when the temperature will increase, for example, from 20 degree to 50 degree, then the vapor pressure here, the partial pressure of the water vapor adhering to this water will be increased. That will be the corresponding saturation pressure at 50 degree Celsius. For example, let it be 0.7 atmospheric pressure. So, vapor pressure gradient will be more, whereas the vapor pressure here will be less than this. So, more is the potential. So, therefore, more will be the rate of diffusion and more will be the evaporation. Clear? Now, one thing is true that this is happening from the surface. It is a surface phenomenon. So, bulk of the liquid, nothing happens. This remains as the liquid and vapor is being transformed from the surface. That means, molecules from the surface is being converted into vapor. So, it is a surface phenomenon. So, therefore, one very important thing is that this vapor is dry saturated vapor. Sometimes I ask this question that there is a pot and there is a water and this is insulated for example. So, let the water be evaporated, it may be at any temperature, even at room temperature also, there will be always a vapor, there will always a vapor because of the evaporation. At any instant of time, the liquid level may go down, it may be infinite small slope, infinitely slow process if this temperature is equal to the temperature of the vapor, but ultimately what will happen at some point, it will be stopped when the saturation pressure corresponding to this vapor will be equal to the saturation pressure at that temperature. That means, this ambience will be fully saturated, so that no evaporation will take place. Whatever may be the condition, I am not going into that detail, but if I ask what is the state of the vapor, it is dry saturated, because this vapor will never contain any liquid in it, clear dry saturated vapor. But what happens in case when we heat air to its boiling temperature. Now, if I have a water here, let us consider a closed box, some water is there. I heat it by immersing some heat at here or heat is supplied from the surface or from the bottom, this is the surface of the like this, heat is supplied. Then what happens? If the temperature is reached to the boiling temperature, let P is equal to 1 atmospheric pressure and T is equal to 100 degree Celsius, then boiling will start. Now, this boiling phenomena starts from the bulk of the liquid. So, until and unless you heat the liquid bodily, not from the surface, but you have to heat it such a way that heat comes through the bulk of the liquid. That means, you have to heat from the bottom of this surface or you have to immerse a heater like this so that the temperature will be reached at saturation temperature and then boiling will occur. And boiling is a phenomena, a similar phenomena, but here the vapor will be generated more violently from the bulk of the liquid. You will see the vapor will be generated from here, all points, even from the bottom where the heat is supplied, if you heat it from the bottom. So, vapor, they will create a vapor bubble like that and this is being lighter than the water that will go up and ultimately there is a collapse of the vapor bubble, because the pressure is released, here the pressure is less, here the pressure is more. So, bubble will be collapsed and ultimately the vapor will be generated and diffused to the atmosphere. So, this will be full of vapor at any stage if you boil the liquid and also continuously you supply water and boil it. So, you will say that always water is being boiled, which is a bulk phenomena, body phenomena. So, boiling starts at a particular temperature is reached that is the saturation temperature related to the pressure at one atmospheric pressure and the vapor is generated within the liquid and this vapor is coming up and bursts here 
collapse of vapor and the vapor is coming out and this is the pool of the vapor dome, vapor zone. This happens in a boiler drum, in a power plant and this vapor is always wet vapor. It can never become, this is one of the very important thing when you will read the applied thermodynamics, the power plant, steam power plant, your teacher may ask you, I do not know, but this is a very important thing that this vapor is always wet vapor. Why? Because when the vapor comes from the body, main body of the liquid and it collapses here and goes out, it always carries or entrains small liquid particles with it. So, this vapor always is a mixture of vapor and liquid that is known as the wet vapor, which may have a dryness fraction, which may vary from some value to some value, but it is not equal to 1. Well, this is an wet steam. So, that is more important that when you heat water in a closed vessel, which is the case of a steam drum in a steam power plant, if you go on adding the heat, the pressure will increase. So, corresponding saturation temperature will increase, you understand? But the vapor will be always under condition of wet vapor, it will never be a dry vapor. Very simple example is that if you draw the PV diagram and if you work below the critical pressure, you see that this is the constant pressure line, this is the temperature isotherm, these are the isotherm. This chapter is very interesting, you will have to think. Now, if you go on heating, it is a constant volume heating. So, what will happen? Its pressure will increase. That means it goes like this, sorry, its pressure will increase. So, this is one isotherm. Pressure and temperature will increase, but it's, it will remain as wet steam. It will remain as wet steam until and unless some point is re reached. It is very near to critical point when the steam becomes dry saturated. But usually within the working range, it is always that if you go on heating, the phenomena will be such that the vapor will be generated from the bulk of the liquid, which is one characteristic feature of evaporation and they will burst at the free surface and will, will escape as vapor from the free surface will always carry an entrained liquid. So, therefore, it is an wet steam. So, if in a power plant operations we require a superheated steam at the entry to the turbine that I will explain. In a power plant after boiler there is a turbine where from the mechanical work is being generated, where steam at high pressure and temperature expands and because of the expansion, this expansion takes place as the steam flows through a series of blades that is the principle of turbo machines. So, that expansion takes place and by the way of rate transfer of the angular momentum from the steam as it flows through the blade to the blades, so mechanical work is developed. That is a different chapter altogether. But when the requirement is that for some considerations, practical considerations that the inlet state of the steam to the turbine should be superheated, if you go on adding heat to the steam drum will not do anything. It will always produce a wet steam. Whenever you take the steam from the steam drum which is being accumulated above the free water surface because of the heat to the water, it will be always wet steam. So, what you have to do? You will have to take the steam and you will have to make a separate arrangement where this steam is heated by some heat source. Usually, it is done by taking the flue gas that is the uh, burn products of combustion and you allow that to flow to exchange the heat or by arranging another heater, electrical heater. So, that separate heating arrangement should be done at constant pressure so that the wet steam becomes dry saturated. Then superheated. You understand? So, that if you take steam from stream drum in any power plant that is an wet steam. So, if you visit any power plant and you see there is no superheater that is known as superheater. Only when steam is taken from the boiler drum and it is being used for the turbine or for any other purposes, this steam is a wet steam. For process industries, we do not bother, we take this steam from the stream drum and use it because they are probably a wet steam will do the service. But for power plant processes that I will explain afterwards when I will be discussing the vapor power cycle, we require a uh, superheated steam, state of superheated steam at the entry to the turbine. So, therefore, superheated steam is required. So, therefore, there is an additional heat exchanger that means steam from the drum is taken and it is being heated separately to make it superheated and that is known as superheater. So, therefore, this is the physics that whenever you boil a liquid in a closed container and generate vapor at the upper in the upper zone beyond the free surface or the separating surface of the liquid and vapor, that vapor will be always an wet vapor. Whereas, if you have a liquid in a closed container, do not boil it. 
Don't raise its temperature to saturation temperature. Keep it as it is at any temperature below the saturation temperature. Even the room temperature will do. But it will be infinitely slow process, very slow rate of evaporation. You will see after some time, there will be a vapor enclosed within this space because of evaporation. That vapor is at dry saturated state. Okay. So since this is the case of boiling water and collecting the vapor at the upper zone in beyond this, uh, at the upper level of this free surface of water is in the boiler and we are very much interested to know what is the drainage fraction of this steam. Now, that is why the measurement of drainage fraction comes into picture because you will get interest only if I tell this thing. That is why I tell now measurement of dryness fraction or quality, measurement of quality, dryness fraction, measurement of dryness. Very simple thing. I will tell only the philosophy. I will not draw a very nice picture and all these things of the equipment. Dryness fraction or quality, quality, quality of steam. One method, very common method is by throttling the steam, throttling, by throttling, by the process of throttling, by the process of throttling. What is this? Very interesting, by the process of throttling, very simple actually, by the process of throttling. What is throttling? As you have heard, throttling is that if you take this steam, now, the diagram is like this, simple insulated pipe, simple insulated pipe. So, in the upstream, we take the sample steam, it is the sample steam, sample steam, whose pressure and temperature I know, pressure P1 and temperature T, T1, capital T1 or does not matter, whose pressure and temperatures I know and they correspond to the saturation values. That means, the one atmospheric pressure 100 degree. That means, the sample steam is at saturated state, but not at dry saturated state. It has got X. That means, saturated liquid, dry saturated vapor and in between states, we will tell saturated state simply or wet saturated state. Simply, we will tell saturated states with dry fraction X. That means, this pressure and temperatures represents the corresponding pair for the saturated state. Now, we are interested to find out x. What is, what is done in a process of throttling? That there is a throttle valve which throttle the steam. I have already told what is a throttling process. We measure the pressure P2, that is P2 and the corresponding temperature T2 after throttling. P2 we measure and T2 we measure. Now, we will see that after throttling the steam temperature is reduced, is inversion point is such for water vapor that with after throttling or with throttling the temperature always decreases. Pressure decreases, temperature decreases. That means, both these things are reduced. That means, P2 is less than P1. Similarly, T2 is less than T1, pressure temperature. But what happens, do you know? Even if this temperature is reduced, the steam becomes superheated. That is the philosophy. Let us draw the diagram. Let us draw the HS diagram. HS diagram, it will be very clear. Let us draw the HS diagram. Well, this is the critical point. Let us draw the HS diagram. So, this is the constant pressure line. Let this is the pressure P1 and this is the pressure P2. This is the pressure P2. This is the pressure. So, our initial point was where? Our initial point was somewhere here. Initial point is some. When you throttle it, though we cannot show the throttling process, but by a dotted line, we can show the constant enthalpy line. The constant enthalpy line is this. This goes like this. This is H is equal to constant. So, the state point will move along this line. Why? Very simple. First is this enthalpy has to be constant. So, this line has to be parallel to S axis. From the entropy principle, the entropy of this system will have to increase because 
isolated system, there is no heat transfer. So, therefore, adiabatic system, the entropy must increase. It is an irreversible process. The entropy of the isolated system or an adiabatic system of an universe has to increase. So, therefore, this will be in this direction. So, therefore, if you ram, draw a horizontal line from this point towards the right means increasing S, then you will arrive at this point. So, now you see one thing categorically, this point temperature may be low, but it is in the superheated region. Let us make it clear more from the corresponding T S diagram also, which will make it more clear in T S diagram. Yes, in T S diagram. So, in T S diagram, if you have any difficulty here in understanding, you tell me that a T S diagram here, if you draw, sorry, a T S diagram here, if you draw the T S diagram, well, this is a liquid line, I am not drawing all these things very clearly. In T S diagram, what happens is that this is the constant pressure line, this is the constant pressure line. So, this is the constant pressure line. That means, this is P 1, this is P 2. In T S diagram, now you see how does it look that this is the <coughs> point 1 has some dynamic structure. Enthalpy constant here we do not know that yet there is no enthalpy parameter in one of the axis of this diagram, but we know the entropy must increase so that the line will be like this an increase entropy. If you plot this, so you see here the temperature is reduced, this is the initial temperature T1, this is the final temperature T2, but this T2 is more than the saturation temperature corresponding really to the existing pressure, that means this is a super heated region, region. Now, the question comes, this is a superheated region, superheated region. Now, the question comes, sir, always it will be superheated. No, it depends upon the initial state. That means, if the initial state is somewhere here, if the initial state is somewhere here, after throttling, it may not come to superheated. If the initial state is somewhere here, after throttle, that means this depends upon the initial state and the pressure up to which it is throttled. But one thing is sure, when you throttle it from any initial state to any pressure, its quality is increasing. Superheated means quality more than one. Mathematically, quality greater than one is superheated state. That means the quality of the steam is increased. That means the wetness fraction of the steam is reduced. Dryness fraction of the steam is increased. But whether it will be superheated or not depends upon its initial state and the pressure up to which it is throttled. So, therefore, here depending upon the initial state of the steam, that means pressure and temperature, our throttling has to be made in such a way, that means it has to be throttled to that pressure, so that after throttling it may go to the initial, uh, it may go to the superheated region. That means, if our initial pressure uh, state is that, then I will throttle it at least up to this value and that pressure has to be, that means this is the pressure line. So, that pressure, that means I will have to throttle up to P 3 pressure. That means the throttling pressure, the pressure after throttling has to be judiciously decided, so that after throttling the quality is increased beyond the value of 1. That means it has to be in superheated region. Why? Because if it goes to superheated region, then we know the value of enthalpy directly from the table. At this point, P T, we know the enthalpy, entropy, specific volume at saturated liquid and saturated, dry saturated vapor. So, to find out the enthalpy, entropy, whatever you require, okay, enthalpy, entropy, specific volume for weight vapor, we have to know X. So, I, without that, we cannot know. That is the thing which is done here to find out the X. But when it is superheated from the superheated table, H 2 is known because it is an unique state at this pressure, this time, that this T 2 will be more than the saturation temperature corresponding to P 2. Clearly, you have understood. That means, for example, if you throttle a weight stream at 1 atmospheric pressure at 100 degree Celsius, if you throttle it to 0.5 atmospheric pressure, then its temperature may be reduced from 100 degree to 90 degree. But at 0.5 atmospheric pressure, saturation temperature is 60 degree. That means, 30 degree super heat. You understand? That means, by absolute value of the temperature, it is reduced, but it is still in superheated zone because the saturation temperature corresponding to the reduced existing pressure is still lower. Clear? Now, when we know the saturated state, a superheated state, we know H 2 and this H 2 
is equal to h1. Now, this part is primary school level thing h a plus x. If you leave this to n school boy, they can tell yes, I can find out x because this enthalpy remains constant that I have told you earlier in a throttling process. If you write this steady flow energy equation enthalpy before and after same. So, h 2 is h 1 is 1 minus x h. These things we know since we know the pressure and temperature. This is clear. This arrangement is known as throttling calorimeter. The, with the similar philosophy, another process is there which is known as electrical by electrical heating, by heating the steam, by heating, by heating, by heating the weight steam, by heating the there is nothing. Usually, I tell these students to read it at home, but here I do it because the documentation is there of this teaching for the outside students also. By heating the weight steam, similar is that here, and it is heated electrically. That's why it is known as electrical calorimeter. So there is a test section like that, which is an electrical sorry, which is an electrical heater. That means steam coming, sample steam. Same philosophy. It is heated electrically by wrapping electrical wires in this. So, this is being heated Q. So, sample steam, I know the pressure P1, this is the state 1, I know the temperature T1. After heating, that means the constant pressure heating P2, and I know that it is made superheated. It is made superheated. That means if I draw the diagram in HS. T s any diagram you can make H s diagram only one pressure pressure is unique. So, this pressure and this P 2 is P 1 except for the frictional loss. So, there is a short section if frictional loss is there there is no expansion P 2 is P 1 that means simply I can show it like this that it is 1 and this goes to 2 a constant pressure heating. T s diagram does not matter you can draw. In examinations, you will be asked to draw the diagram. So, you develop your practice also in drawing diagram. T s diagram, it is like this. Uh, T s diagram, you draw the constant pressure line like this. This will be like this. So, the point is here. So, it will be simply heated. So, there is the heating. Entropy increases in both the cases. So, because of the heating. Okay. So, therefore, we see that it is by heating we are keeping it to superheated region. So, we know the pressure, we know the temperature. So, we know the H 2. So, H 2 is now fixed because it is the superheated state. So, how to find out H 1 now? It is not throttling process, H 2 is not equal to H 1. So, we have to find out H 1 because H 1 is 1 minus x H A plus x H G. So, these things I know because I know this P 1 T 1. So, how to relate H 2 with H 1 in this case? H 1 is equal to? No, 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 not C p delta t. Simply H 1 is H 2 plus q or minus q because H 2 minus H 1 is q. If you write the steady flow energy equations, if you write the steady flow energy equations, what is this? H 1 and this is H 2. So, H 2 minus H 1 is the heat transfer simply the steady flow energy equations H 2 minus H 1 is Q. It is clear. So, therefore, if I know H 2 and if I can measure the heating, the heat transfer, that electrical heater is there, I can know the power input. So, that from which I can know what is the heating, what is the heat Q coming to this steam. So, H 2 minus H 1 is Q. It is clear. Okay. Now, after this, I will close this discussion on these phase diagrams of a pure substance by solving simple two problems. Let us see the first problem which is a direct application of the direct application of the throttling calorimeter, throttle valve for measuring the quality of the steam. Well, what is this problem? Example a sample of weight steam from a boiler drum. So, that is why I explained all these things. In problems, you will see that boiler drum. So, you have to understand what is this. Otherwise, these words will not be understandable by it. does not matter. You can solve the problem at 3 mega Pascals. 
that means it is a wet stream at three, whenever you tell wet stream at 3 mega Pascals mean it is saturated region, but wet that means its temperature is known, temperature is the saturation temperature corresponding to 3 mega Pascal is put through a thought, no do not ask any time sir pressure is giving, temperature is not giving, but it is written wet stream, wet means the saturated stream, a dry saturated stream at 3 mega Pascals, okay. but if all adjectives are omitted only steam at 3 mega Pascals you shout anywhere if you see a problem like that. How can I understand that steam is wet, disaturated? So, if the steam is superheated, then 3 mega Pascals pressure is not sufficient. I have to be given with temperature. But whenever wet steam is given, that means it is saturated state with some dryness fraction. It is put through a throttling calorimeter in which the pressure and temperature are found to be point. That means this is the pressure and temperature after throttling. Well, so what is the quality of steam? That means now you see one thing. After throttling, these data are given. Whether the problem is well posed or not, that we can check from the steam table. If you see the steam table, you will see that 120 degree, the saturation temperature corresponding to 0.1 mega Pascals is less than 120 degree Celsius. And for this problem, it is very easy to check without going for steam table. 0.1 mega Pascal is atmospheric pressure, is almost atmospheric pressure. The value of the atmospheric pressure is 0.1 mega Pascal for which the saturation temperature is 99.6 degree Celsius, approximately 100 degree Celsius. So, this is saturated. Uh, sorry, this is superheated. Sorry, this is superheated. Sorry, this is superheated. So, therefore, you can see coolly from the steam table what is the value of H2. H2 is like this. My nomenclature is like this. 2 is this section, 1 is this section. This is the throttle part. So, H2 corresponds to 0.1 mega Pascals 120 degree Celsius, if you see this steam table, H2 will be 2716.28, you can check it at your hall, kg, kilojoule per kg. Sometimes you have to make an interpolation, because as I have told, at different pressure, the steam tables are given values for different temperatures. Different values of temperatures, they give V, H, S. So, the temperature may be 100, 150. So, in between you have to linearly interpolate, that interpolation is valid. So, a linear interpolation has to be made because at exactly at 120 degree Celsius, you may not read this steam table to find the exact value. Okay, I have also interpolated, it is given at 100 and 150 degree Celsius. Okay? So, this is the value of H, that means H1 is also H2 is equal to 2716.28 and that equals to what? 1 minus x h f. Now, h f is the 3. Now, you go to the again, this is read from the superheated steam table. You go to saturated steam table, steam table for saturated steam, then 3 mega Pascals at 3 mega Pascals, you see the find out the value of liquid, uh, value of the enthalpy at the liquid state, which is h f. I am directly writing the value 1008. 0.42 plus x into the value of 2804.2. That means this is HF and this is HG, which is read from the steam table for saturated steam at 3 mega Pascals. So, this gives x is equal to 0. Point. This is a straightforward application 0. 0.951. Clear? Now, next another problem I will solve, this is another problem, quick. Steam expands isentropically in a nozzle from 1 mega Pascals at 250 degree Celsius to 10 kilo Pascals. So, steam expands isentropically in a nozzle from 1 mega Pascals 250 degree Celsius to 10 kilo Pascals. The steam flow rate is 1 kg per second, the steam flow rate is given. Find the velocity of steam at the exit from the nozzle, so velocity of steam is required. The exhaust steam from the nozzle and the exit area of the nozzle, remember it, velocity of steam and the exit area. The exhaust steam from the nozzle flows into a condenser and flows out as saturated water. Okay? The exhaust steam is flows into a condenser, 
condenser, there is a heat exchanger where the steam is condensed and flows out as saturated water. Who takes the heat from the steam? The cooling water, which enters the condenser at 25 degrees Celsius and leaves at 35 degrees Celsius. The heat water is heated, which takes the heat from the steam to condense it. Well, determine the mass flow rate of the cooling water. We have to find out the mass flow rate of the. So, we have to find out three quantities. First, again, I read the problem. Steam expands isentropically in a nozzle from 1 megapascals to 50 degrees Celsius to 10 kilopascals. So, pressure is reduced. But the final temperature is not told. That is the beauty. The steam flow rate is 1 kg per second. The amount of steam flow, mass flow rate is given. Find the velocity of steam at the exit from the nozzle. Because of this expansion, what is the velocity? Because the basic purpose of a nozzle is to convert the pressure energy or the thermal energy. In case here, it is the thermal energy into velocity. And exit area of the nozzle is also to be found out. Then the exhaust steam from the nozzle, the exhaust steam from the nozzle flows into a condenser and flows out as saturated water. That means the exhaust steam will be a vapor, may be a wet vapor also. It may be a wet vapor, but which has to be condensed to saturated water. So, this heat taken, that is the typically the latent heat by the cooling water, which enters the condenser at 25 degrees Celsius and leaves at 35 degrees Celsius, determine the mass flow rate of the cooling water. Now, let us first draw the diagram. Let us draw the diagram. What is the diagram? Block diagram. The problem is like this. There is a nozzle. Well, there is a nozzle. There is a nozzle. So, steam enters the nozzle like this. This is the first condition. The steam enters at in a 1 mega Pascal. So, 1. So, this is the state 1. P 1 is 1 mega Pascals and T 1 is 250 degree Celsius. Nozzle is insulated because isentropic expansion. This is 2. So, 2 condition is that P 2 is equal to 10 kilo Pascal, sorry, small k kilo Pascal. Then it goes to a condenser. The condenser, there is a cooling water, okay. cooling water, cooling water enters at 25 degrees Celsius. So, cooling water let T w 1 25 degrees Celsius and going T w water at 35 degrees Celsius. Steam coming at 3, which is at the same 10 kilo Pascals P 3. There is no pressure drop here, because this is a steady flow kilo Pascals and saturated, saturated liquid, saturated liquid. So, this is the, this is the condenser, this is the nozzle. Well, so this is the problem. Now, how I will solve? This is an isentropic. Let us then draw, that means state, the entropy of state 2 will be same as the entropy of state 1. True? That means, if I am asked to draw this diagram in T s diagram, which may not be necessary, which may not be necessary T s diagram, but still I am drawing this, that let this is P 1, 1 mega Pascals, this is P 2, 10 kilo Pascals. So, now our starting point 1 mega Pascals to 50 degrees Celsius. So, first of all, we will have to show, if we have to show this diagram on T s plane, then we have to see that inlet state point is what? Initially, in this case, inlet state point will be uniquely fixed. That means, it has to be in superheated region. If you see this steam table, you will see that at 1 mega Pascals, at 1 mega Pascals, the temperature, saturation temperature, T saturated is equal to 179.9.91. Point 0.91. That means approximately 180 degrees Celsius. That you can verify from the steam table for saturated state. That means it is superheated steam. So that this point is here. Usually this type of expansion, after the expansion, isentropic expansion, the point comes to a weight vapor in the reduced pressure. That means pressure <coughs> after the <coughs> expansion. <coughs> Sorry. 
how do you know that that this point is wet so first you find out what is the entropy because the main catch of the problem is that it is an isentropic problem that means entropy at the initial state is equal to the entropy of the final state is 2 so if you find the entropy at the initial state then you will see the entropy is equal to s1 is equal to 6.9247 okay specific entropy that is kilojoule per kg k this is the entropy okay now if we see that see the steam table at this pressure 10 kilopascals pressure you will see at 10 kilopascals pressure SF is equal to 0 0.6493 in the same unit kilojoule per kg k I am not writing and SG is 8.150. Now you see one thing that this S1 is this that means S2 is S1 is 6 point sorry 6 no it is 6 point uh, all right it is 0 0.6 okay it is all right i am sorry it is all right so see this is 6.9247 so you see one thing that this specific entropy is more than that of the liquid much more it is 0 0.6493 whereas it is less than the that means this is more than this point entropy of this point but it is less than this this is 6 8.1502 and this is 0 0.6490 so this point is somewhere in between that means this point is the is in the wet region then if you find out the h1 h1 now you know that this x is known not h1 now we can find out x how we can make 6.9247 is equal to 1 minus x into 0.6493 plus x into 8.1502 which gives you the value of x as the value of x is equal to 0.837 this is the value of x which is being found now how to find out the velocity how to find out the velocity velocity will be found out if we write this steady flow energy what will be that h1 is equal to what h2 plus v2 square by 2 steady flow energy equation h1 is equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 okay because heat transfer work transfer nothing is there so take care of the kinetic energy initially kinetic energy is negligibly small it is simply v2 is root over 2 h1 minus h2 now how to find out h2 question is that h1 is known because h1 is read from the again steam table by which we read the uh, entropy 2942.6 kilojoule per kg so h1 is read from the steam table h2 is simple h2 we know the pressure 10 kilopascals and since we know the x we can know the a h we can know any property provided we know h a by g that is found from the saturated steam table at 10 kilopascals pressure the way we found out these entropy values for liquid and dry saturated vapor similarly we find out and it is very simple that means 1 minus what is the x value 0 0.837 0 0.837 into h f h f has been found out as 191.83 kilojoule per kg I am not writing the unit 0 0.837 into 2584.63. So that becomes equal to 2194.6 kilojoule per kg. So if you put this value of H2 and these values of H1 here, where V2 will come 1223 meter per second. It is clear how to find out the area. You know, area is like this if you write the mass flow rate at any section you know from fluid mechanics equation it is rho a v here v2 a2 is the area rho 2 so what is rho 2 rho 2 is v2 again v2 is what 1 minus x vf2 plus x vg2 
So, you read V f 2 and V g 2 and you can find out this V f 2 will be 0 0.001 and V g 2 will be 14.67. Well, so you put the value of x, it is 1 minus 0 0.837 and it is plus 0 0.837. You get the value of V 2 as 12.28 meter cube per kg. Well, so if you put this value of V2, if you put this value of this velocity and m is 1 kg per second, so m is 1 kg per second is A2 into 1223 divided by 12.28 and this becomes equal to, sorry, A2 is equal to what? 0 0.01 meter square. I think time will be up. Some time is there? Two minutes. So that next part I can if some time is there then I can complete the next part. Next part is the what is the mass flow rate of the water. I can go. Time is up. Two minutes are there. So therefore time is up. So next part that to find out the mass flow rate of schooling water I tell you the answer is M W this is left as an exercise 47.9 kg per second. So you will have to make an energy balance here. And you assume that Cp of water as 4.18 kilojoule per kg k. So you assume this Cp. So Cp delta T is the heat taken up by the water and the change in enthalpy is the heat given up by the steam. So it comes with the saturated water. So 3 corresponds to the enthalpy of the saturated water and H2 you know. So you write the energy balance and get the mass flow rate of the water whose value will be 47.9 kg per second. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you.